Hey YouTube, this is Little Rocker Cutie 2005, also known as Andre, back here with you. And if you're wondering why I don't sound so upbeat in this video, it's because I received a bit of sad news. Um, I was talking with DVD Collector in 1974 on Facebook, and he actually told me that um, our good friend Lunaria Claire's grandma just died. So this is going to be a very special video for her. It's going to be in two parts. Um, I'm going to actually start with the first part before. I get into like the part that's really gonna make me smile and be happy again but actually this whole thing may make me feel better because it's kind of part of the healing process I'm gonna share a little story with you I lost my grandma back in 2005 I was 21 years old and it's still kind of hard to deal with and get over because there's some things that I can remember about her that just make me break down and cry. I mean, I still suffer from flashbacks from time to time. It's been it's been really hard to deal with, but Claire, when you see this video, just know I'm here for you and if you ever ever need to talk, I'm here for you. I know what you're going through. It's it's going to be hard, but trust me, it will get easier as time goes on. Remember, time heals all wounds. This first part I'm going to do for you, Claire. I know since you like Van Damme, I'm actually going to share some of, some movies from my Van Damme collection as recommendations for you. We start with my DVDs. The first one being Sudden Death. Now this is the one where um, Van Damme has to save his daughter who's kidnapped during a Stanley Cup game. It's actually pretty action packed. It's from Peter Hyams. Um, I'm not sure which other Van Damme movie he directed, I can't really remember, but that Sudden Death. Then I've got Universal Soldier and Universal Soldier The Return. Both of these are really good. Um, Universal Soldier, um, he's up against Dolph Lundgren and him and Van Damme have, this really, have a bunch of really cool fight scenes in this movie. It's probably one of the most underrated Van Damme movies in my opinion and probably one of my personal favorites same thing goes with the sequel. Uh, Van Damme comes back for this one, but Dolph Lundgren doesn't. Um, this one's actually got uh, Goldberg in it from, as you may know, from WCW and the WWE. He was, he's a wrestler. Um, and there's him and Michael J. White, who plays this like supercomputer type guy. He's like the new type of Universal Soldier. Um, it's been a while since I've watched these movies, but they're both really good and very underrated. I did see you pick this next one up on Blu-ray in in your upgrade and save thing, but love sport. This is one I left you a comment highly recommending. It's a really really good one, and it's the one that put Van Damme on the map. He plays Frank Dukes, who was the first American to win a tournament in Hong Kong called the Kumite, and it's a really badass movie. And when you get a chance, Claire, check it out. I'm going to get into the ones I have on VHS. As I told you, Claire, in a comment, Kickboxer. This one is absolutely phenomenal. He's, he's um, in Thailand, and he's a trainer to his brother, and his brother gets paralyzed by the current kickboxing champion. So basically, Van Damme gets into training and goes on a quest for revenge, and like every Van Damme movie, he pretty much wins in the end, kicks the guy's ass. It's just a really great movie. That's Kickboxer. The next one I recommended in the comment I left was Death Warrant. This one is where he goes undercover in a prison, and it's like one of the most violent prisons in the country, and he's there to find out who's behind a series of murders, and there's an inmate played by Robert Guillaume who helps him out plus there's an attorney who played by Cynthia Gibb who poses as his wife and he there when the secret gets out that he's a cop um, they dispatch this guy called the Sandman to take him out and it basically ends in a knockdown drag out fight with the Sandman and of course Van Damme wins once again but that's death warrant this next one is another one that I recommended, Lionheart. This is the one where he's a French Foreign Legion soldier and he deserts because 
his brother is seriously injured. It's kind of like kickboxer in a way, but he goes into the underground fighting circuit to get the money to help his brother's family out. And of course, once again, you get a knockdown, drag out fight at the end. Van Dam just kicks ass in this movie. It's another great one. I'd highly recommend you check it out. The next one, Nowhere to Run. This is the one where he's an escaped prisoner hiding from the cops and he helps out this widow and her son played by Rosanna Arquette and I think it's yeah, it's Kieran Culkin who's Macaulay Culkin's brother and Van Damme's basically hunted by the police and the this developers hired, got, hired guns who want to kill him because they want the land that Rosanna Arquette's house is on and it's another one where Van Damme just kicks ass and wins again. And the last one I'm going to talk about is The Quest. Now, a lot of people say this is basically a remake of Bloodsport, but this is one that Van Damme actually directed himself, and actually the real Frank Dukes helped write the story along with Van Damme, and it's this one where he enters this contest known as the, let me see if I can pronounce it on the back of the box, Gang Gang, I think it is. Um, but it's like a winner-take-all battle, and Van Damme's forced to compete where if he loses, he could die. But, of course, we all know he wins, and it's another good Van Damme movie, The Quest. Now for the second part, this is actually a little bit of a happier thing, and this is something that I kind of want to share with you guys, because, like I said, I lost my grandma back in 2005, and... Like I said, it's still painful to deal with, but before, I, but I have a lot of happy memories, and those are the things that I keep close to my heart, and Claire, those are the things you should keep close to your heart, too, but I'm actually going to show you guys a picture, if I can get it up close enough. That's me when I was younger, my grandma in the middle, um, and right there is my mom. My grandma is her mother, and my grandma was just the most incredible, incredible lady. And as you can tell, she always wore an afro. That was like what I called her trademark. And it's one of the things I remember that can always put a smile on my face. But there's a lot of things that I remember that I really want to share with you guys. Um, from the ages of like 6 to 14 or 15... I spent every weekend with my grandma and we would rent a ton of horror movies, we'd eat pizza, we'd pig out, and we'd just have a grand good time. Um, we also used to watch a lot of cartoons. My grandma liked um, Rugrats, Tiny Toon Adventures, stuff like that. She liked anything with a, with a really mean kind of character in it. Um, Angelica from the Rugrats was one of her favorites and she always called her the mean little girl. Same thing with Elmira from Tiny Toons. She could never tell the two apart, so she always called him the mean little girl. But I'm actually going to share a few movies in my collection with you guys that my grandma loved. The first one is actually Tales from the Hood. Now, you'd probably be surprised that my grandma would like a horror movie like this, but we rented it on VHS when it came out, and she really, really got into it. And I actually got this in a trade with Buffy Zena Man because he wouldn't give it up at first, but when I said that it was one of my grandma's favorites, he, he was he was close to my grandma, so he couldn't really say no. But if you know Tales from the Hood, it's one of those anthology-style horror movies, you know, like kind of how Tales from the Crypt and Tales from the Dark Side were on TV and like the Twilight Zone and stuff like that. But it's a really good one that deals with these three like drug dealers who are going to this funeral parlor to retrieve a stash and the mortician is played by Clarence Williams III and he takes them on a tour of the place showing them all these different dead bodies and telling them stories about what happened to the people and the stories are just really graphic and cool. I remember the first one being with this cop and he was like um, the other cops were these racist assholes and they killed this um, like civil rights leader 
and the civil, the civil rights leader actually comes back from the dead and the cop who found out that he was a prominent civil rights leader and didn't want him killed actually leads the civil rights guy who's come back from the dead to the cops who killed him and the cop actually ends up dying in the end in this really cool cool graphic way if you've seen this you know what I'm talking about the second story actually deals with this little boy who was abused and he makes drawings that come to life and he's dealing with this thing called the monster that's actually his abusive stepfather and in the end he draws a picture of it then crumples it up and lights it on fire and it actually does the same thing to the abusive stepfather which I thought was just a really really cool way to end that story and the third story deals with this um, it's a guy who bought this plantation and it's haunted by all these voodoo dolls and the the dolls actually come to life and they kill the guy by knocking him to the ground and actually chewing him up it's really graphic and cool but my grandma absolutely loved 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 this movie and it's one that I'm proud to have in my collection because it was one of my grandma's favorites. Now these aren't all horror, um, most of them are, but there's two comedy series in particular that my grandma absolutely loved. The first one is Problem Child. Now my grandma loved these movies because of the character of Junior who was just this really, really bratty little kid and would do anything to get his way and he did it in such funny, funny ways. But my grandma's favorite was actually part two because they added a little girl to the mix who was actually worse than Junior and my grandma absolutely loved that character but my grandma's favorite part in that movie is the part where um, they're at this carnival and the little girl has um, like heels that are like that make her taller so she can get on this ride called the crazy dance and of course Junior's too short so he can't get on it and of course the local school bully is tall enough to get on it so they both pick on him for it and what Junior does to get revenge is he turns up the speed on the ride to like super fast and makes everybody on the ride barf and it's actually a part I can't watch because it's actually so gross that it's like ugh. I my favorite is actually the first one because I love the part where He's causing chaos at this birthday party. Now he throws all the presents into the swimming pool, puts firecrackers in the birthday cake to make it explode all over everybody. It's just, these are just really, really funny, funny movies. And it actually comes in a two pack on one disc. I paid $5 for this at Walmart. If you can pick this up anywhere, I highly recommend it. But that's the Problem Child movies. This next comedy I'm about to talk about is actually a trilogy set. And it's the Porky's Trilogy. Now my grandma turned me on to these movies when I was like eight years old and most people would refer to these as like the American Pie of the 80s because they're about these high school boys that'll do anything to get laid and that's basically kind of what American Pie was at the same time and actually when American Pie came out I wasn't allowed to watch it and I was like 15 years old but I had to point out to my mom that my grandma let me watch these in order for in order for her to let me watch American Pie. But that's my story on the Porky's Trilogy. Now I'm going to get back to the horror. And the next one I'm going to talk about is Nightmare on Elm Street. Now as most of you guys know, this is mine and Buffy Zena Man's favorite horror series. But I actually got into it because of my mom. And I turned my grandma onto it and she absolutely loved the first one. The first time we watched it together I was like seven years old and I can remember it just scaring me to death but my grandma absolutely loved it. So this is actually a series I keep close to my heart because of her and also because of my mom because she's a big big fan of it as well. But that's Nightmare on Elm Street. One my grandma turned me on to and then I discovered the sequels on my own is Halloween. Now, I think most of you know this movie. I'm, I'm sure all of you pretty much know this movie. I mean, who hasn't seen Halloween? But this is one that my grandma absolutely, absolutely loved. And she recommended that I watch it. And so I checked it out at like 8 or 9. And I was scared by it, but I loved it at the same time. 
and it's just a series that I'm hooked on and it's one that me and my best friend Lil Craze 25 he's here on YouTube but he doesn't make videos um, actually for Christmas I'm gonna send him the camera I use and a couple of my two ESD chips because I might be getting an HD camera for Christmas but I'm not sure on that yet because we don't we're Christmas is still pretty far off but mom my mom said she might get me an HD camera so I may be upgrading and my videos will be in HD from then on but you all know the story of Halloween um, it turned Jamie Lee Curtis into a star it turned the character of Michael Myers into like this horror icon and it's just a great great movie but that's Halloween now these next these next two you guys might not have heard of I did talk about them in my top 15 Stephen King adaptations but that video is actually still uploading right now I don't know if it's done yet or not so I don't know when you guys will see it but the first one I'm going to talk about is the dark half now I already talked about this in my Stephen King adaptations and it's basically you know the writer who kills his alter ego and the alter ego comes to life and starts killing people close to him but you know Stephen King wrote the book George Romero wrote and wrote the screenplay and directed the movie but I saw this when it first came out I think it was yeah this is from 1991 so I was like seven years old I think and I think my grandma and I didn't see it until 1993 because we actually decided to give it a rental and we watched it and my grandma just loved it but that's the dark half this next one was also in my Stephen King adaptations list and it is Sleepwalkers now this is another one my grandma loved I really don't know how she felt about most vampire movies but this is one that she loved because she loves the ending where all the cats in the neighborhood kill the vampires and it was just a really cool take on vampires and this actually wasn't based on a Stephen King story or anything he actually wrote it for the screen and the last one I'm going to talk about is actually a remake it's the Night of the Living Dead remake now my grandma and I caught this on TV uh, when TNT used to do their monster vision thing with Joe Bob Briggs and this was one that my grandma fell in love with we used to rent it all the time before I bought the VHS um, a few years ago before she passed away I found it on DVD and I picked it up and it was a tradition that every time I went and saw my grandma this is one we watched like I think every few times I went to see her and but that's the Night of the Living Dead remake and I just wanted to share with you guys some things about my grandma which I've done and this and Claire I want you to know it does get easier you know I'm here for you I know exactly what you're going through and when you see this video and if you ever need to talk like I said just get a hold of me I know what you're going through I know it's tough but you do have one at least one friend here on YouTube who knows what you're going through and totally understands and once again this is Little Rocker Cutie 2005 also known as Andre telling you to enjoy life, enjoy some Skittles, enjoy some Starburst, any more words of Chris, eat some chicken. Always keep your grandparents at heart, even if they're gone, or if they're still with you. Keep them around as long as you can. Spend as much time with them as you can. Grandma, I know you're up there in heaven. I love you. I miss you so much, but... I think I'm going to end this video now and I will see you guys later.